Hey, and welcome to the first lesson of electronics for kids and our first video in the series. In this video, we're going to have a look at just the components we have in front of us. So if you do not have this box yet, um, no worries. I do have a link in the comment below. I do have a link in the comment below where you can maybe get it from. If you cannot get it in your country, no worries. Send me a message and I will try to help you where to get components that you can follow these tutorials as well. And I do find this box cost effective and it's got enough components that might keep you busy for a whole year. So let's get started with our lesson. In the first lesson, we're going to look at introducing your kit to you. So this one over here, what's all inside and what we're we going to do with it. So you can see in the slideshow, the slideshow is also below uh, that you can open and follow you'll see all the components you have in here and what they're actually used for. For example, the Arduino is the brains of our operation, what we're going to program later on in lesson four or five. And then we get many other different stuff. For example, a joystick. Uh, we've got a moisture sensor we can plug into soil and measure the water. We've got a remote control to turn on maybe lights. And what else do we have? We have many LEDs and we have even an old little microphone where you can talk and make something happen. So you can see with this we're going to do a lot of different projects. So go through this and read what all is in your box and then we can start building later on. But before you start we need to think about safety. Um, in electronics we have voltages and currents. Uh, voltage and currents you're using for this Arduino system is not really dangerous at all. You can't hurt yourself, but you can maybe break some components. So there's three rules you have to follow. First, make sure everything's always off when using anything. So if you've got light shining, make sure you remove the power. If the Arduino's on and you want to plug stuff into it, make sure you remove the power. Also be very careful with components' legs. So for example, this LED. It's got two little legs and they're quite sharp, so they can actually go into your skin and even poke your eye. Don't do that. And then also later on you'll notice batteries always have a <laughs> batteries always have a positive and negative side so have a positive and negative and these sides should never actually touch each other so later on as you have the nine volt batteries and got a red wire and black wire make sure that those two wires never touch each other you will break the battery uh, you won't hurt yourself don't worry too much but you will break the battery or the components around the battery and then you can't use it anymore so through all these components we're going to talk about active and passive components those are two categories of all components in electronics active means like a speaker a button things that you can actively do where passive components is things that you don't really see like a resistor a capacitor We'll introduce it later on, but those ones, you, could, you can't see what's happening when you apply a voltage or when you play with it. So why is it important for you to know what the difference between an active component and a passive component? The reason being is, you know when you take a balloon and you're rubbing against your hair and your hair stands up? That's called static, and static is quite dangerous for active components. So you ever walked in your house and you touch a door handle and you feel that spark? That spark can actually damage electronics. So you've got to be very careful when handling active components when you've been walking on the, uh, a mat or a rug or you've been rubbing balloon on your hair. Uh, you can actually damage electronics. Um, so that's why passive is not that dangerous to break, but active electronics, you can break it by just creating your own static electricity by rubbing your feet. Now we come to probably one of the most important aspects in electronics called Ohm's law. So Ohm's law basically says that my voltage is equal to my current times my resistor. That's it. Um, but that's quite boring to know it like that. So this image is quite a nice way of seeing it. So now we'll just go through the introduction of it. First, speak about, about what is electronics and how, and where you see it in your in your house, in your world. And then we can talk more detail about Ohm's law. Very important. So what is electronics? If you look around your house, I bet you that if you look around you cannot look around without seeing any form of electronics. For example, here I've got my phone, I've got some headsets, all these are electronics. And what they all have in common is these three parts. It has an input, that means I can either push a button, I can switch something on. It's got a process where it does something it's supposed to. For example, my headphones, I need to be able to hear the music. So I've got an input of putting the headphones on 
I've got an input to link it to my Bluetooth, and then I've got a process of taking the information from wherever I get my audio from. Do I link it to my cell phone? Do I link it to my computer? And then I get an output, which is the sound. So all electronics has an input, a process, and an output. For another example, my mouse. Move things around, the input will be a mouse push. The process will be what my computer is doing, taking this mouse input, making it appear on the screen. That is the process, and then the output is what you see on the screen, the mouse pointer moving. So that's basically electronics in a nutshell. So how does my computer get the information that it needs to do certain things? That is normally done by voltage, current and resistor. And we will talk about that in our next tutorial. So how does my computer take this information from my electronics, my input, does the processor and voltage? How does a computer or any electronic device communicate? The way electronics speak to each other is done by using terms as voltage and current. So you've probably seen movies where they, you see one zero, one zero, one zero, it's called binary. And that is how electronic components talk to one another. So when I push a button on my mouse, it's sending signals to my computer. My computer understands what those signals are, and then it knows how to move it. So that's the basic of my electronics. But that ones and zeros are actually voltages and currents. So that's why now we're gonna speak a bit more about voltage and currents. And then once we understand that, we can build something to experiment with these new terms that we just learned. Now, after we spoke about what's electronics, um, so electronics basically has an input. So a button I push, for example, on this keypad, I push this button, that's my input. And then this button has to go somewhere. It goes to my Arduino and my Arduino says, hey, I saw that you pushed the button. And then it can do something. And we told the Arduino in code, when I push this button, turn on this LED. So it does the process and then the output is the LED. So my input's the button, the Arduino processes the, this information and then sends the, to the LED to switch on. So I want you guys to think now about five different electronic components in your house that is input and a process and output. For example, your TV remote. I push a TV remote to change the channel, 25, and the channel will change on the TV. I make the volume go up and the volume goes up on the TV. So my input is the TV remote and the output is the sound that goes up the image on your TV that changes. So think about five different ones, write it down. Let me know in the comments what you think, what your five. We explained a bit about Ohm's law. Uh, now I suggest again, watch this video and see exactly what voltage, current and resistance is. It's very important to understand this for the rest of your electronics journey. Um, if you understand those three, you can make magic happen. So watch this video at your own time. Let's discuss the three most important terms in electronics. It's called voltage, current, and resistance. You guys are going to play a lot with these three terms the more you start building and the more you get your hands dirty. So before we look at this picture, let's think about a hose pipe. So a hose pipe that you have in your garden where you water your plants has a small diameter where you push water through like this picture over here. So what happens, you can see the voltage as the force trying to push out the water. You can see the current as the water flowing. So the faster the water flows, the more current we have. And then you can see the resistance if anything's in that water by blocking the water flow. So are you squeezing it with your hand? Are you closing the, the garden hose like this? then you are increasing the resistance of the water. So that's a nice way of thinking about it with electronics. So keep that in mind about the hose pipe where your current is how fast the water flows, your resistance is, is there anything resisting the water from flowing? And then your voltage is the pressure building up, pushing that water through the hose pipe. Now that you have that in your idea, let's speak about this picture. This picture is a great explanation about how voltage current and resistance all work together. So in this picture, you'll see there's three men. So you'll see my vault, the man, the yellow man at the back is trying to push my current through this small wire. And then you can see the current trying to go through the wire called amps. So voltage is a measurement in volts. So the yellow man is called a volt and then current is measured in amps. Then you see a man on top trying to squeeze down my small pipe. So he's making it more difficult for my amp man, my green man to go through the path where he wants to go. 
and that is what we call resistance and that is measured in ohms so when you look at this picture you'll see how they relate to one another so what do you think will happen if my volt man is very strong what will happen to my current then if my volt is high and strong and it gets bigger and bigger then my current will go through that path much quicker that means my current becomes higher so when my volt man gets strong the current is easier to go through because he can push harder then if you look at the man on top my resistance man which we call ohm if he is very strong then he can close that path of the current and can make it more tight and then my current will slow down so when my resistance is higher stronger my current will decrease so that's important to know in electronics when my voltage is high my current is also high and when my resistance is high my current is low just think about this picture when my volt man is very very strong then you can push that green man through the pipe with no issue whatsoever but if my resistance man is even stronger then you can keep that rope tight and my current is not going to go through that hole very quickly just keep that in mind because you guys are going to start playing with it and once you play with it you'll understand what i mean now that you've went through all the slides you've watched the video about ohm's law about electronics now let's bring it to the real world so i want you guys to grab a straw and a clothing peg and a glass of water what i want you guys to do is suck up the water and blow it out easy so you blowing is the voltage and then the water going out is the current so the harder you blow the more water comes out um, the softer you blow the less you blow the less water comes out so that is a relationship between voltage and current now take the peg and put it on top of the straw you'll notice now when you blow less water will come out than before because i increase the resistance so my peg is like a resistance the tighter i close it the less the water flows so this is a great way to think about it once you start building your circuits once you put an led on if i put my resistor there my current decreases my output of my current is less so my led is not that bright you everything will come around but play around with this stop blowing suck up the water and blow it and see how you can change the voltage current and resistor so that was the lesson, end of lesson one we spoke about voltages currents about ohm's law and what electronics actually is the input the process and the output that's all electronics and programming is i challenge you to look at any electronic device in your house it's always an input a process and an output those three simple steps you can build anything in the next lesson we're going to look at the breadboard so this over here we're going to go more into that how to use it how to connect to it because the circuits you're going to build you're going to build on a breadboard so this is a device that can be used to connect different for example leds um, then we use jumper wires to connect the leds to certain batteries shall i say and this will be our base of connecting everything we'll go in detail why it's called a breadboard in the next lesson but basically in the olden days they actually used the real breadboard with hammer and nails and to complete the circuit but that's for the next lesson thanks for watching guys if there's any questions please leave it in the comments and i'll get back to you if something you still not clear or clear not un if you still clearly don't understand something please let me know and hopefully i can help you explain it better have a great day until the next lesson bye